saw, dude. Roll credits. <laughs> hey, show's over. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Always Open. So glad you're here, guys. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman. And with me today, I got some friends. Who is that? You, introduce yourself. Open your eyes. Oh, Christina! <laughs> Christina! I'm John. John! I don't know why I'm doing that. And it's me. It's me. Your favorite, your number one, your neighborhood, uh... A uh, recertified lay responder. Look at that baby. Trained. What was that? A lay responder? Oh, yeah. Lay responder. Okay. Is that French? No, it means I'm a lay person. What does that mean? It means I'm a regular person, but I'm trained. I'm not like uh. a I'm not like a first responder like as a job. Like oh, a like a, a, a like you're when the first responder pedestrian. doesn't respond. <laughs> We get you. You get me. Yeah. <laughs> I would want you to be the first responder, though. Just well, for all, like just banging through the doors. She yeah. will be. Yeah, let's let's get you to choke hose. right. Well, I did yesterday. You were eating lunch and you weren't choking, but I did practice on you. Yeah, that, that scared me. Yes. I could have choked. You could have choked, but I just ran in and I said, "Hello, do you need help?" And you said, "Absolutely not." So then I proceeded to give you the highlight. How do you spell yes. lay responder? I think it's L A Y. L A Y. Yeah. L A I. It's like a like layman, you know, like explain it in layman's uh, terms. Just gotcha. like, like person who is not like professionally whatever. It's because you're uh, laying low until they need you. Laying low, but they gave me this cool little pin, so I'm gonna wear it. Now I'm trained in CPR and first aid. Yeah, you, Mariel took CPR uh, classes, I guess, yeah. earlier this week, yeah. and she said that um, for anyone who's tall, she also knows how to oh, yeah. do the Heimlich on them. Mm -hmm. You gotta beat the shit out of you them. Got, you literally just gotta punch your stomach. Yeah, you like, yeah, no, you like yeah. wind up and you like beat them on the side of them instead of getting behind them, because you can't reach, couldn't reach my little arms. I had, I had friends growing up that uh, they were married and the guy was like six, I wanna say six two, maybe six three, and the girl was four foot. Jesus. Mm. 10, maybe five feet at wow. best. And I just, I, this is the most inappropriate thing to think when you look at people, you'd be like, I don't know how you have sex. What, what, is, what is that like? See, it's funny because you go to that. Someone draw me a diagram. I always think about <laughs> a very tall guy with a very short girl, and I'm just like, going down on him must be super easy. It's, it's, oh. it's, you guys could both easy. be standing. Yeah. Well, if she was going to get it from behind, they must have a tall bed. <laughs> she's just up on she's just up on a bar stool. Yeah. And like, all right, get the ladder, honey. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys follow uh, Zilker Bark? I don't know who that is. Zilker Bark. He's a photographer here in Austin who photographs a bunch of dogs, um, and it's just like he's gotten pretty famous. Um, but he had this one dog that was half pit bull and half uh, uh, weenie dog, half dachshund, mm -hmm. and um, the caption was just I think like the dog's name was let's say it's Bowser or whatever. They were like, uh, everyone says that Bowser's dad was the bravest dog to ever live because he was a... The, do he, the dad was, was a dachshund? He was a dachshund who That's not a brave people. dachshund. That's someone picking up a dachshund and fucking another oh, dog with it. It's just God. like, oh, to get no. that height, that's you, what you'd have to do. No, She's it, it could there. just lay down. Like, <laughs> it could just lay on top of the dachshund. I don't and... But like... <laughs> It would have, Wait, are it was you talking like, about the, the pit bull riding the dachshund? Yes. No, no. Okay. The dachshund's the one's got to be riding the pit bull. Oh, I see. Because the the dachshund so if that's had the, the case and the pit bull's yeah. lying down, then the dachshund just would be like vertical. Are you talking about missionary? I was thinking <laughs> let, they did they did missionary. <laughs> it's just two dogs on top of each other. I know yeah. we said always open is like a sex show, but this is a whole dog other sex. level. Dog sex. As long as we're not talking about having sex with the dogs, I think it's yeah. Fine. Not Long talking about it. Having sex with the dogs. Mm -mm. <laughs> talking about it or doing it, Barbara. <laughs> I anyway, need some more beer for this episode, I, I think. am trained in CPR and first aid, so I'll take your breath away and then I'll give it right back. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> I don't like that. that well, was... they, they cut away from me before. Is I... that what they put on the other pin that you're... Yeah, well, the other <laughs> pin says, be gay and do crimes. Oh, which John has that shirt. That today. Um, and then this pen, pin just says number one crier, and this one is a lesbian katana. Whenever oh. I wear that shirt, the Be Gay Do Crimes, uh, you can definitely tell anybody who's in like law enforcement or even security because they don't like it. They just like look at you like. I've, no, I've had multiple guys even just go like, what's that shirt mean? <laughs> well, did that happen at RTX? Yeah, the, uh, one of the security guys at RTX asked me that. <laughs> He's like, what's that mean? I was like, sometimes you gotta do crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sir? And, and he's like, yeah, but like, does that mean you condone crimes? I'm like, some. <laughs> and I like, I went, like, I, I even like went deeper. I was like, sometimes being gay was a crime. And he's like, not anymore. I was like, eh. Depends on where you go. In some cultures, there yeah. are to some people. We kind of had a, like a little uh, agree, disagree, slash, John just walked away from this conversation. Yeah, <laughs> didn't that's want to probably finish a it. smart idea. Uh, yeah. Mm. Damn, dude. Um, I was gonna ask you something about, you said, Pen. 
I meant pin. Do you, do you do pin? Pin. 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 What accent is that? When pin. people go pin, pin. instead pen. of pin. You look like you were in pain pen. when you said that. Pin. 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 Like a pin. 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 Versus a pen. Pen. Pin. I got, I had a, I don't know if I've said this word before, but I had my accent described to me recently by someone new that I met as being the absent of an accent. Yeah, you're very straightforward. And, and it's the only thing about John that's straight. Yeah, that's only, yeah. Yeah. High five, John. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time to reject you. You just, just took the rejection. <laughs> she did it preemptively. No, oh, man. Well, it's no, but I think, it's, I think it's the California accent. Southern California accent is like... Is like hitting the default button on a character creation screen. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Although, like, uh, Californians say certain words and some stuff that, like, gives them away. Like, yeah, well, I, th it rad. I guess it depends. Yeah, it depends on the part of I mean, because there's the stereotypical, like, <laughs> California dude. There's the beach bum. Oh, yeah. Beach mm -hmm. bum. But, there, but that, that was, like, something that was perpetuated just by TV and, and, and movies. Like, I never, I, that was actually more associated when I grew up with actually just the bro. The bro was the one, which I guess the bro was the beach bum who went and got a big old truck and went to the sand dunes but and drank Monster Energy drinks. But the bros were the ones. Like, I used to work at a print shop, and one of our clients was Monster Energy Drink. Mm -hmm. And the heads of their marketing teams were, like, just like, so, dude, yeah, I'm here to get my truck wrapped and everything like that. And these guys were so just blown out and high all the time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and now just it's legal there. Bros. No, not the time. This is back. This is like, this is like 15 years ago, 10 years ago. I feel like California weed was like always, always. kind of legal, right? It, it was, was like very much more accepted. Well, like yeah. Well, fair. we were like early adopters of uh, of medical. medicinal, yeah. like that. Like medical licenses became uh, common, like again, 15 years ago. So sure. Yeah, yeah. People always, and it was just like. Go tell a doc you got a headache. You get a license. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. Um, yeah, and then you just walk into any place. Yeah, my first experience at a at a what are they called dispensary. It. Dispensary. Yeah. You could order it there too. You can get it delivered. Delivered. Yeah, yeah. like like a friggin like like Uber Eats. Uber Eats meal. Like I McDonald's. I went to Disneyland in like earlier this year and got with my grandma and I couldn't handle it so I got weed delivered and it was the <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> I was like, what couldn't you handle being at Disneyland with your Hold up, you, you, you meandered through that story a lot. <laughs> well, well, the, the, what could you not handle? I couldn't handle being with my grandma gotcha. or Disneyland. What's wrong with what? Disneyland? Because Disneyland, it, there, it is, it's scary. It's overwhelming. It's, it's intense. What? There's so many kids. There are the people in the kids. costumes freak me out. Then why are you at Disneyland? Well, because I was. It was a free trip to LA. No, that's also, not. That's like, a free trip to LA. Bonding with yeah. your grandmother, I assume. She's yeah. like, let me what's, take you to Disneyland. You're probably like, is okay. Is the characters the, the scariest part? I think it's the fact that I don't know. I have like, I have. I have like weird conspiracy things about Do Disneyland. I, I just, love love Disneyland, so I'm very curious. I feel like we, this is a whole di deep dive that mm -hmm. we need to do. Yeah, well, I know. I just think that like I feel like kids go missing at Disneyland. I feel like it's like a. Were weird... you worried you were gonna go missing? <laughs> 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 or that one of the costumed people was missing kid in disguise? Right? I don't know. There's something icky about that place, and I went. It's because... the happiest place on earth. I was told that <laughs> uh, but um and you know how she made it even happier yeah i made it really happy i took so, 600 milligrams of uh edibles and i went <laughs> to disneyland i won in one day. In one day. I don't know the mi 600. edible milligram stuff. Oh, very high very I, what's like a, a, a normal dose 10 10 10 milligram but i had 300 milligram Rice Krispies and I ate them all, and then I went to Disneyland. And How quickly like, did you eat these? I just, I just ate them. Like just like, like in two, like two bites. Well, no, I, I ate one, three hundred, and then I waited two hours, and then I ate another okay. one. Have you ever seen Brandy TV? Yes, I love fucking Brandy TV. Brandy TV probably eats half of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so, gets violently. I don't high. know. Have we talked about it on the show before? There's a. YouTuber I checked out Brandy TV. You guys are so good. Yeah. She uh, takes edibles usually. I don't think she's ever smoked weed on I don't know. channel. I don't she takes edibles um, and then she does usually special effects makeup yeah. and she's like wickedly high when she's doing it it is so funny I, she, I think she lives in California yeah she, she, lives, she lives somewhere where it's legal it's legal there mm -hmm. and it's just it's so entertaining but like 
that's half of what. Well, yeah. where'd you get where'd you get these things delivered to? To a hotel. Oh, okay. To not, Disney. Not okay. Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had my vape pen at Disneyland so I could go to the bathroom while my grandma and her friend and the, her two kids went and did their own thing. And so I, was, I did so like... Just hiding in the there bathroom? Was, there was... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm a crazy person. No, it was... I, I, the first... I have a picture on Instagram of the whenever the edibles start kicking in of me on Splash Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and they took a photo as soon as it's like a 50 foot drop, and it's me going, <gasps> like so freaked out. Was that the worst experience? Like, no, it was awesome. It was. I, I feel like that would have made it worse. Yeah. Because like it then was, the paranoia and just. I didn't. So I don't much. get. I don't get paranoid. Uh, but I guess it's just. It's so much. It's so. What's stimulant. the word of it's stimulation? Well, I guess it's, Disneyland is overstimulating, so you take like a depressant to like. Yeah, to kind of even it out, because I get anxiety just normal, but whenever I smoke weed, I don't get anxiety. Well, there you go. So it it's like, I could have gotten one of those medical cards back in the day, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. This episode of Always Open is brought to you by Native. Native creates safe, simple, effective products that people use in the bathroom every day. They create products with trusted ingredients and trusted performance. Native is formulated without aluminum, parabens, and talc. It's filled with ingredients found in nature, such as coconut oil, shea butter, and tapioca starch. They never do any animal testing, and there's free shipping and returns as well. Less is more with Native. They have fewer, simpler ingredients, so you know everything that is in their deodorant. Native comes in a wide variety of enticing scents for men and women. Plus, they release new, limited edition season scents throughout the year. They also offer an unscented formula and baking soda-free formula with those uh, with sensitivities. Their classic deodorant scents include coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, and eucalyptus and mint. There's no risk. Uh, they offer free returns and exchanges in the USA. Uh, I've talked before about me using the coconut and vanilla deodorant, and I love it. Uh, I no longer get bumps or irritations under my underarms or those yellow marks on my white shirts, like other deodorants would cause. Uh, and I recently started using the cucumber and mint one, and it smells so good. Um, if I could eat my own armpits, I would. That's, that's gross, but don't worry about it. It's delicious. Uh, for 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code ALWAYS during checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com, promo code ALWAYS. nativedeodorant.com, code ALWAYS to get 20% off your first purchase. Thank you, Native. Well, Disneyland is the happiest place on earth, but I, I get the, the whole, like, scared of mascots thing, because, like, you don't know who's in there. Oh, I love yeah. the mascots. Uh, I found out that Wes, Wes Ellis used to be, a, uh, he used to be... Chewbacca. Chewbacca, and I think also Darth Vader, I'm not sure if he... Yeah, one of the Star Wars, I, it was either Kylo or... It was either yeah. Kylo or Darth, I can't remember. I but, um, wow. Vader. And when he at was Disney still working or? at Disney World. At Disney, Disney World. And when he was still working there, before he worked here... Um, you know, I was at Disney World and I took a picture with with Chewbacca and after he told me that and I was like, could this have been you? And he was like, that could have been me. Yeah, oh, like I, that could have been. But you he, would never know because but, you can't. Right. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah. I, there's no way to tell. But um, I was they just have like, multiples around right. the park. And I was yeah. like, he was the man in the mask. Did I ever tell you uh, when I first graduated college before Rooster Teeth was ever a possibility as a job, I was looking into different lines of work and I was like, wait a minute. I would fucking kill to be able to work at Disneyland or Disney World as one of the princesses. That would sure. be amazing. Yeah. And I like went through the whole like online research and application process. And at one point in the form, it said, "All right, if you're applying for this, these are the requirements. If you're over the height of five foot seven, you will not be uh, considered for the following roles." And it was like every single princess. And it's like, but here are the roles that if you're over five foot seven as a female, it's like. Cruella de Vil, mm -hmm. the stepmom in Cinderella, <laughs> Ursula, like oh, all the like wow. female villains. And I was like, God damn it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I they guess have, it's because the princes are. They have strict requirements across the board. So that, that maintains like that the characters look the way they do on screen with their other characters. And also so that all the characters will match across the parks. You yeah. probably yeah. know more too because your ex used to be a princess, Yeah, my right? ex used to be uh, Ariel. Um, so yeah, and and... She even like attempted to go back and apply for it uh, after. Uh, Do you actually have to keep like a certain weight to be a part of the? I would imagine the, to like fit into maybe to a fit costume. into the costume. Yeah, I mean, I, I it was yeah. I don't I don't recall very strict like weight requirements. Her ever telling me about that, but like, 
you know, they're 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 probably not going to be super happy if Ariel is just like sitting there with a big old muffin top over her over her like a uh, fish is, thing. That is hardcore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her. Right. Yeah, that's the Ariel I want to fuck that's with. That's the Mariel. Ariel. Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ariel. Ariel. <laughs> well, Barbara that's earlier today, she was like, mm, "Your makeup looks good today. What'd you do different?" And I was like, "Well, <laughs> okay." Meryl's makeup looks extra good. It like, looks really good. Looks you didn't different. say that though. You didn't say extra good. You said, said what did you do to your makeup today? It, it looks, looks good. good. It looks good. But I, what I meant was your no, makeup No, you said looks it looks good today. Yeah. But like in a good way. Yeah. So I didn't want to say it looks different because that could be implied as bad. It's okay. But I was, I was like, like no, it's it really later. good. <laughs> that's why you have the pen. Yeah, that's why I have the, the pen. <laughs> the pen. The pen. The pen. The pen. The pen. But yeah, well, I've heard that Mickey Mouse has. To, Mickey Mouse is usually like a girl who's like four foot nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. You could. A lot you of. You could bench press Mickey Mouse. A lot of the the fuzzies are 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 oh, women. Girls. Um, Tiny women. Yeah, oh. and that's what my ex did those as well. She did other fuzzies as well. I remember fuzzies, is that like what they call them? I believe so. I thought it was like, oh. I thought it was furries. Oh, it's like face characters and something else, right? Like I don't the, the, call them furries. The, the human, like yeah. the princess face, and stuff, face what they're characters? Called. They're called face characters. <laughs> gotcha. The only face character for Star Wars is, uh, is uh, Rey. What about, I guess they don't have like Princess Leia and Luke anymore, right? They don't have those. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's true. Went to a special event at uh, Disneyland Hollywood Studios in Florida, and it was a Star Wars thing, and we got to meet all of the characters and like that. Went with Wes, who got us through all these lines, like through the back of the lines, because everyone still knew him. But the only face character was Ray. Mm -hmm. But we did meet Darth Vader, which was super fun. And there was like a long line. We got taken into the the we got taken in through the back entrance and everything like that, and got to meet him. It was super fun. And Darth actually talks to you and has all of these lines and everything that he'll say to you with Darth mm -hmm. Vader voice and. Come to find out, it's actually just a bunch of pre-recorded stuff that is triggered by motion and hand placement of oh, Darth the entire really? time. Whoa. Yeah, which is super cool to think about, like that kind of technology. I wonder what the orgies are like. The what? Orgies. Orgies. Okay. Like, there's got to be there's got to be orgies at Disney World and Disneyland, right? Of the of the characters. Oh, the that's why I don't like going. <laughs> Oh, the orgies? Of the orgies? Cause you know, All right, you've never, Christina. You, you seem like someone who's been in an orgy before. I, I, I've I, met someone who, well, one, I met someone who has been in an orgy, yes, at Oregon. Was it you? There's like the, and I looked in the mirror, and I was like, <laughs> fuck. You've uh, been in an orgy. No, uh, there's like sex parties here in Austin that I've heard about that you just go and you just where are these sex? Yeah, <laughs> no. they're in Hyde Park. That's a hard no for me. Uh, That's a hard no. Yeah. Oh, it would be hard. Yeah. Nope. Hey, hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think dicks do that, but um, they don't have little fingers nope. that go come here. Not mine. Little at least. tentacles. <laughs> oh god. Not mine at least. Uh, oh, ten stickles. All right. Ten. Oh. Ten stickles. That was a hard. Yeah. Let's just that was, move on. That was a hard one. No group sex for you. Never done it. I've never done group sex. I have um, kissed two people at the same time, but that's not group sex. Like like but like I a like, like this. Like a triangle or like okay. turn like, to the next person. Like, how does that work? How does that work? I feel like there's not enough lip to go. Yeah, around. like a big thing of kissing is like almost like creating a a seal. Who gets yeah. the who gets the tongue? No, no. There are there are cracks in in this circle, but um. <laughs> triforce of kissing. When I was, uh, I think I talked about this before I left on my trip, so this must have been the last season of Always Open, but that I wanted to go, I was going to Amsterdam, and I was like considering going to, uh, sex club. to a sex club. Yes. And? and I did not. <gasps> but did you look them up? Um, well, I have, a, I have a friend who's very, she's, uh, she wants to be a sex therapist, so she's very sex positive, and she's like a part of all these groups, and she was like, I can find you like 10 right now. The most common ones are for gay men. Right. Like, there's yeah. one on every block you can walk in and. Um, gay men sure do like to have sex. They sure do love to have sex. Mm -hmm. Were you uh, also considering this before, like when you were single? Yeah, and I wasn't. I wasn't considered to actually partake in. I literally. I oh just yeah, just to go and, like, to and go and just look at. Like I, w I imagine myself if I were to ever like get the balls to do it, uh, walk in, like giggle for like two seconds and just be like, oh my god, I should not be here. It have must you, be an experience to oh, physically watch people have sex. I was about to like, say not porn. Yeah. Have, okay. have anybody here ever watched somebody else have sex? No. Like in real life, ever no. walked in on somebody having sex? Yes. Yes. But did oh. they stop immediately then? No. 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 Did you walk out immediately? I took, I went like. Oh, they're having sex and then walked out. Were they, 
I'm guessing they weren't like parents or relatives, but like friends. No, they were friends. Okay. Yeah, and it was, um, it was pretty gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> what well, uh, what position was, were they in? I, they, it was either they were doing anal or oh just my god from the back or whatever. <sighs> but I walked in and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> and then I was like, what? Okay, I guess. Okay, I'm can you get us a Gatorade? Huh? They're like, can you get us a Gatorade? <laughs> yeah, can. Hey, do you have a hey, do you have a, a cigarette? <laughs> Just yeah. like ask them, and they're like, no, it's a mess. <laughs> hey guys, uh, you, you you busy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I did I did walk down the red light district though, and I actually went with a funny story that I can't believe I haven't really told yet. Uh, I went with two community members. Yeah, Jeannie oh, and Chelsea. Cool. Jeannie and Chelsea. Down the red light I'm so district. jealous you down got the, to see them. Yes, I love those. Yes, I I never those met them before. Lovelies. Um, but they live in the Netherlands, and uh, when I was going there, when I was going to Amsterdam, I was like, hey, like, I'm going to be here for a few days. Like, I have a day that's kind of free without anything to do. Like, if you guys are available, we should hang out. Yeah. And so they came down, and we had such a fun day. Um, we literally spent all day together and, like, kind of ended it by going down the red light district, and all three of us were just kind of like, hee <laughs> It's really cool. I've been to Amsterdam, and the red light district is, like, really, there's, like, really cool documentaries about the red light district, but did you run into anybody who would, like, groups of people who would pass by you and say X, 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 X? No, what is that? Oh, okay, that's weird. I wondered if that was just, like, a one-time thing, because I was walking through, and I know that there's, like, a huge drug culture there, but, like, I walked through the red light district, and there would be crowds of people, and there would be dudes who would just, whis like, whisper or say, like, X, 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 and it would, and then like, I looked that up as and it like was a, like ecstasy. Um, like they're looking oh. for it or yeah. wanting to sell it? they want to sell it. Oh. And so yeah. I just wondered. It's like that episode of Broad City where Abby's walking around the Central Park just saying weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weed? 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 weed. Did it work? Uh, well, someone then thought she was a dealer. She oh, like, she no, no, was no, looking, trying to buy she was it. looking for weed. Yeah. He's like, well, who, who the fuck goes around saying weed all the well, time? Well, did you, you, were you there at night and were you there during the day? Or? I was there at night. You were there at, I night? There at night? I mean, it might have happened. I just like, I have. You missed the, yeah, uh, the crowd. I, or maybe you look like someone who would want to see it. You did yeah. like, <laughs> um, I did, they determined. I did, I did find out, uh, uh, according to an, an RT Life that we did recently um, called Office Antics that I walk like I'm angry. So maybe, <laughs> maybe, and I also had an umbrella in my hand, so I imagined that I was walking around looking like I was gonna beat the shit out of someone. Probably, <laughs> people were just like, don't even talk to her. I apparently walk like I'm a fucking hunchback of Notre Dame, <laughs> like, which is true. I need to, little, I need to work on my posture. We all dinosaur know this. hands. <laughs> and dinosaur hands. Gotta, gotta, gotta push it back. Gotta I, push those. Every time I'm at the gym, my trainer's just like shoulders back and down, and I'm just like, it's yeah. tight. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I'm not used to it. <laughs> I have a, I have this posture corrector thing that I bought myself last year, and it literally, it's it like just a like, backpack? it looks like a backpack without stra like without a backpack, right? Um, but I have it hanging on a doorknob, and so if you look at it too quickly, it kind of looks like a strap on, because it's very st strappy. <clears throat> and, but it is not a not strap. Not yet. You've tried. Well, that's not where I keep it. <laughs> Do you own a strap on? Of course. Do you actually? Of course. Do you own own the ones that have like the pocket where you can fit any dildo, or is it just? Yeah, okay. you swap them out. Oh, I don't. I don't. I don't know about strap-ons. I don't either. I've you never. Are you uh, <laughs> are you the thruster or the, thr <laughs> the thrusty <laughs> top or bottom? <laughs> essentially, I guess. It's it's or you switch it... off. Okay. It, you know. Because you both can enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Take turns. It's a free world. Hmm. Mm. I'm, learning, I'm learning about you. Make today. a TikTok. Make a TikTok about it. <laughs> Have you guys ever used a strap one? I no. No. I've used. I guess I've you used, have a dick. I've used Although, like <laughs> anal stuff. <laughs> Just yeah. Barbara gesturing to me, going, "I guess you have a dick." Well, you can still use a strap on yeah, whether you, you have a dick or whether you don't. Someone, someone would use it on you, I guess. Are yeah. there strap ons that go over dicks? There are. Just make your dick bigger. There are. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what the like mentality. I guess they would have is, to be there. make your dick bigger. Yeah. Because anything on top of your dick thus makes your dick bigger. Right. There is no like strap a, on yeah. that will make your dick yeah. smaller. But I think there's some that like, you know, maybe it's I guess suspenders for, for a condom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think for maybe probably people who might have like erectile dysfunction or, mm -hmm. um, you know, something there's some kind of like insertable. Uh, I have used, uh, speaking of erectile dysfunction, I don't 
suffer from that exclusively or anything like that, but I've had some issues in the past involving my hormonal imbalances mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, which yeah. can affect like my sex drive and my sex performance, that kind of thing, if I don't have my testosterone at the right levels. Long story short, I take supplement t testosterone. Uh, but I tried uh, in the past checking out like just out of curiosity for like longevity, see if it make uh, sex last longer, try out the kind of condoms that have like the numbing agent on it. I was like, oh. let's see how this works. Oh, oh, it numbs so you're like oh. less sensitive? It, yeah, it has, it has that kind of thing that, that basically, yeah, makes you less sensitive and that kind of thing. I was like, that sounds fine. Like who doesn't want to be able to have sex longer? You know, yeah. that kind of thing. And so I, I, I bought these things a while back and the motherfuckers <laughs> work, they work and they work too well mm -hmm. to the point where then I don't feel my dick. Oh. Like, I don't feel my dick. Also, does it, because I know it's probably on the inside exclusively, but is it possible that it could be on the I'm outside sure it, and, like, numb her? I'm sure it oh. could happen where it might get out, but it, I, I've never experienced that. But it's just, uh, I bought, like, a box of them, and then, like, the first, like, few times I used them, I was like, this is terrible. Because, like, it's actually great for, like, let's say the first, like, five minutes, because it does. It makes you less sensitive and, yeah. and, and. And as a guy, your your like mindset while you're having sex most commonly is like, don't come, don't come, don't come, that kind of thing. Don't come. Because like don't come, don't come. most, <laughs> I can't speak for all guys, but I'd say most guys are able to, if they really wanted to, to be able to come pretty quickly if they really want to, no matter what. Yeah. Some guys have a harder what time. What a dream. Uh, yeah. And 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 sometimes you even get into like a pocket where you're like, no, nah, I, I could do this for forever and not come, that kind of thing. But uh, like. I, if so, so like when I used them, it was like, oh, this is nice. It's not so bad. And then like, but if you, but after about five minutes, then it just goes like, I don't feel anything down there. I don't like, there's really nothing <laughs> like, and then it's just, it's just like nothing's down there. So you just have to stop having sex. And I, I don't think I threw them all away because a couple times now I've pulled out condoms and then I'm like, fuck, I got the wrong this condoms one again. Out. Oh, no. <laughs> and so it's just like, we're done. Uh, I can go down on you and that's about all we can do. But like... So it numbs you to the point where you go soft. Yeah, because... Because you just don't feel anything. Because it's just like you're not even getting any stimulation, which is often what helps our erection stay, is that you're like, oh, I'm being stimulated, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just like, it's numb. Jesus. Um, so they're, they, the ones, at least the brand I got, I don't know what brand I got, but it was just like, this is not good. So it's either like normal condoms or no condom at all. Kids, practice safe sex. This episode of Always Open is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food. HelloFresh has you covered. Break out of your dinner rut with HelloFresh's over 20 seasonal chef-curated recipes each week. There's something for everyone from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian and fun menu series like the Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. Uh, HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you know you'll get something delicious. You could add extra meals to your weekly order, as well as yummy add-ons like garlic bread and cookie dough. You could also easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. Uh, I've been making the same HelloFresh recipe about four or five times now, just with their instruction card. It's a cheese ravioli, and it's got tomatoes on it and breadcrumbs. It's delicious. Uh, Trevor loves it, too, so I cook it for him all the time. One of my favorites, and you could save those meal cards and, and cook the same meal over and over without the actual ingredients from the meal kit. Uh, an added bonus. Get nine free meals with HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com slash Open90 and use the code Open90. That's HelloFresh.com slash Open90, that's 90, and open code 90. Thank you, HelloFresh. Yeah. Very important. Yeah, they had that numbing stuff for your throat, you know? So for like, oh, so you wouldn't gag? Yeah. So you don't you get, get some uh, chloroseptic. <laughs> what? It's like the throat numbing spray when you have a sore throat. I was going to say. <laughs> How do you know this and we don't? Chloroseptic? Yeah, yeah that's a, that's a, that's I mean, this is just a, that's it's like an an over the counter, medicine. like okay. sore throat spray, yeah. but I'm assuming maybe it'll work the same. I don't know. I've never had a dick in my mouth. Is, do you often have <clears throat> trouble gagging? Trouble gagging? I mean, trouble Tr with, with gagging? Gagging. Uh, I know that you you mentioned on the last episode you were on that you were you've seen a guy with a chonker. Yes. Oh my god, I forgot I about the chonker. I still see the chonker. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I was telling him I had a friend. Uh, well, Jad was like, "Please, you should never tell your friend this, your sex partner this." 
Uh, but I was like, yeah, you know, I have sex with, you know, a couple people, and for some reason, like, other people's dicks are just so easy to go into my mouth, but chonker <laughs> is just very difficult, and I, like, gag. It's just too big. Was it, Chad was it, upset you told him this? Well, Chad was like, don't tell him this. Don't and then tell I him. I told him it. Oh, and then you and told him And he was like, pat myself on the back. I, didn't I was going to say, what guy doesn't want to hear that he has a big dick? I know, yeah. I guess, but I think there is such a thing as, like, too big of a dick. Yeah, I guess too if it's, thick. like, becoming an issue. No, it's not. Oh, it's not an issue. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, right on. Oh, cheers to that. <laughs> Gross. Ew. <And> Naruto. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> we do, we, I tried anal for the first time. Oh. With chonker? With chonker. Oh. I had to buy a prepper thing. Like an enema? No. Or like no, a butt plug? Like a plug. <laughs> like a like butt a, plug? Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah, you gotta fucking stretch that shit out. Enema is not gonna prep her for taking the big, this is make her nice and clean, that's well, about yeah. it. Well, yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, did you do anything to, cause I, I mean, I can imagine how exhausting it must be to be a gay man who's constantly having to think about cleansing out their butthole. There was actually, yeah. there was actually a, uh, what's the, the online site, like Medium, where you can like, you can submit just articles like uh -huh. Medium just takes articles from anybody who wants to write them. Mm. There was this really great uh, gay uh, journalist a long time ago that I remember following a bunch of his, because you can follow people's like posts and that kind of thing, and he had some really great ones on, this is like before I came out as bi and that kind of thing, but he had this whole great article once about the whole ordeal that he goes through on a day that he's gonna have anal sex. Yeah. And he's like, it isn't just like you decide in the moment, okay, we'll have anal. He's like, no, 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 there's like, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, okay, today I'm gonna have anal sex. And like, there's a whole like yeah. preparatory cycle. And I'm sure his uh, habits probably go above and beyond what everybody's habits are and that kind of thing. But it was it was just very interesting, especially from someone who had never experienced that and was still in the closet or anything like that, to read that. And to, like, you know, like, yeah. there's like cleaning and there's right. even like, if you want to, like prepping for like things being in there and that kind of thing with, you are know, there spreaders. At home? Oh yeah, you can at home. Anima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What under, how, like is it, what are you, what? My dad used to do it before tax season. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, talk are we talking about the Hold same on. type of anime? Here? Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. No, I'm not even kidding you. Why? Be it would He would get so stressed out, okay. and he'd have to do, like, he would need to, like, release a bunch before tax season because he'd get really constipated. Oh, oh bummer. Oh, so he actually, wow. like, literally needed it. That's <laughs> I thought it was just, like, you know how people do a juice cleanse? Yeah. Well, I guess people just, people actually do enemas like that. Like, people will go, it's like. It's not good. It's, Don't, yeah, it's not do good. Not, unless, do I mean, not do like. First yeah. and foremost, talk to a doctor about any medical yeah. thing that you're considering. <laughs> do not listen to us or yeah. our advice <laughs> uh, <laughs> ever. I have a friend who has she has gut problems, um, and her girlfriend gives her at home enemas, and she I was just like, wow, that is truly like how you know you love someone. Yeah. Like yeah. because you were willing to help them like stick this tube in their ass, clean their ass and system out and like still have sex with them I had a day. moment like that with Trevor this past weekend. <gasps> Tell me. Where I'm like, you truly love me. Um, so it was on, you know how we had the four day weekend just uh, last week because of mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. So I get my period every single month, Thursday to Sunday. Like Bitch. it start, starts on a Thursday and it usually ends Sunday or Monday. Whatever, it's because I'm on the pill and it's a regular thing. Oh, I'm on the pill and that doesn't happen to me. Uh, it's, uh what can I pills say? do one. <laughs> um, we'll share later yeah, what, yeah. I, what I used. <laughs> and for some reason, I woke up on Thursday, like not thinking it was Thursday or whatever it was, and I forgot to like prep the night before for getting my period, and mm. I had gotten it through my pajamas oh, and the sheets. onto the sheets, oh, and like bummer. he was already awakened downstairs, and I, we have white sheets. Yeah, and I was just like. Uh oh, um, and he's like, "What's wrong? What happened?" And I was like, "Uh, I had an accident." And he's like, "Are you okay?" And he like ran upstairs, and I'm like, "No, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like, um, I just uh, I got my period, and I didn't I remember." And he's just like, "What happened?" And I was like, and I pointed over the bed. It was like you know, right? Yeah, hardly it's anything. Usually, like, super tiny. And he's like, "Oh my god, it's okay." And he like took the bed sheets off, and he like went over to the bathtub and started like washing it for me. And I'm like, "Oh my god, you're like this is." too nice. I was like, I could take care of this. I could wash this. And he's like, no, 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 just go get cleaned up. Don't worry about it. And it's he was not, like, it, uh, that's great that he did that. Yeah. It's great but that he did that. Th and that's like, I'm not used to sharing yeah, yeah, yeah. that right. intimacy oh, with that's him. The, that's yeah. the problem I have 
with uh, most men, especially straight men. I have a lot of problems with straight men. But uh, that that is abnormal. Mm. Kudos for Trevor for handling like that. That Trevor's a great guy. Oh yeah. Uh, and it was like like no big deal to him. There are sweet. there are a lot That's of sweet. moments like that that I hear that, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm just trying to like put out like what the standard should be, and I'm like, the standard should not be that you're surprised that he reacted that way. The right. standard should be that guys should just be fine with like periods and periods. Right. And like, I guess it wasn't. I guess I wasn't surprised that he acted that way because no, Trevor would never give lovely. an explanation otherwise. But it was just like I. I've spent 30 years dealing with my right. own mess in that way, and like if I screw something up, I'll clean it up. And yeah. like I'm not used to being like, oh, this gross thing happened. Like come take a look and yeah. help me clean it up. Yeah, it's definitely something that you've kept, like you hide it yeah. to a certain extent. Like yeah. that's happened to me in my life before. And yeah, yeah. It's been just like, oh, I'm embarrassed. Let me clean this up before anybody knows. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was just like, uh oh, because I was like, this is our bed, and I'm, like I knew he wouldn't be upset, but it was more of just like. I felt comfortable enough sharing that with him, yeah. not expecting him to clean it up, but yeah. for him to be like, oh, like, That's ever, cool. it's all good. Yeah. Okay, Trevor. It's yeah. nice when you get to that point with someone. Like, if you, mm -hmm. you know, because some people I feel like may never reach that, like, feeling that close with someone or oh. feeling that intimate with someone. There are relationships I've been in where I'm like, that I would have never been able to be that intimate with someone. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, had, I, had, I definitely, like, I had really relationships where it's never gotten to that point, and that's always bothered me, because at the very least, like, for all the things I complain about my marriage, which is a, a book, uh, <laughs> uh, it was, the one thing that happens is that, like, you know, when you're with somebody that long, you get, it's inevitable you get that comfortable. That kind you of almost thing. have to. Yeah. yeah, and so then when you get into new relationships, you're like, oh, we got to get through that stage where it's like, you know, uh, this is me projecting things where it's like where I don't feel embarrassed, like even just like farting in front of them and that kind of thing, or even like accidentally letting gas pass or like weird body functions like that. Uh, but I, 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 I started dating someone recently and they were somebody that I think is because of just our dynamic and who we were and that kind of thing that there was that comfort level pretty yeah. quickly. Um, mm. And that's always like nice when you have somebody that like, even just like, I don't know how you are with Trevor and your significant other like that, but like, them being allowed to hear the sound of you peeing or like you even just pooping oh, in the yeah. same like yeah. we're very very intimate with that stuff yeah. like it like i don't like <laughs> what a way to i don't like <laughs> we there's like one thing we are where, so intimate with we'll that. just like we'd be like i'm gonna go poop now like yeah. peace out yeah yeah, yeah. And like well and like pee with the door open whatever yeah yeah no like deal. you don't turn the faucet on yeah. when you're like no. doing yeah. although i will say that i still am like hesitant for him to hear the kerplunk <laughs> Because, yeah. like, that to me is, like, you get the girth of it. No, I... Bit. Like, my, that's a little too much it's like It's like watching Olympic diving. It's like, oh, that was 10 out of 10. Yeah. I had, I had a great moment with, the, with this person where uh, I, I made a mental note that I'm like, I like that you did this. They talked to me while they were in the bathroom at one point. Aww. Like, they were, they were, they, were, they, like, yelled something, and I was like, that takes comfort where you can... I, I mean, I talked to Gus one time while he was peeing. He was like, don't ever do that again. Because <laughs> we both went into the restroom at the same time. And we were talking as we walked in. But I think he would prefer that once we had approached our stalls, yeah. uh, we had stopped talking. What do, you, what do you girls do when you go into the bathroom and there's another girl in there? And, or like you go in at the same time? Because to me... The silence is almost more awkward than still kind of keeping up a yeah. late conversation. I have, I, I don't know why I get pee anxiety. Like, I get stage fright for some reason. I yeah. love being in the bathroom by myself. And I think, as a like, girl, you do? I oh, thought yeah. that was totally only a guy thing. Oh, if no, you're no, going, no. if you're at like a bar and you want to go to the bathroom together and like, yeah, it's I mean, loud. Describe yeah. to me yeah. why you have pee anxiety. I don't know. I think it's because I grew up, so I grew up with um, two older brothers, but my parents built their house. Uh, and so I was, I had my own like ensuite in my bedroom. Yeah. And so like, I've always had a private bathroom. Yeah. Bathroom has always been very private. And even in a girl's restroom, you have your own stall no right. matter what. Even yeah. if there's someone might be right next to you and that's still like. Right. Yeah. I mean, in like a, in a public setting, like whatever. But my, my girlfriend currently, she, you know, and I always used to say, I mean, I was in a relationship for a long time, um, before I became single and now I started dating someone else. But like, I always used to say on this show about how I would never like, that's. That's no, that's like no, no zone for me. Peeing? Um, yeah, just like any kind of like bathroom stuff, you know. Uh, and my ex, she was one of those people. She would turn on fans, she would turn on faucets, and <laughs> she made it seem like such a shameful thing. Yeah, and yeah. So that just perpetuated like whatever kind of Your like anxiety. internal shame. So I felt how is it now it. with you guys? Um, oh, Hannah's just like whatever. Like I gotta fucking pee. <laughs> like yeah. we have one bathroom. What are you gonna do about it? That's great. Yeah. Um, which is great, and it's helping me get over like whatever not issues, like kind of self-imposed issues that I have, but uh, 
the other day, like we were just being stupid and she was kind of like teasing me or whatever. And then she got up and she's like, oh, I have to pee. I'm going to run to the bathroom. And she's like, that's like, that's the place you won't go in. Uh, and so I like chased after her and tried to get into into the bathroom before she could close it. And so she locked it and I was like, this is my house. Like I know how to get in. So I, <laughs> I jimmied the lock and I broke it open. And, I, and she was like sitting there peeing and I was like, give me a kiss. <laughs> While she was peeing. And we did it. And we did it. We broke that barrier. Meryl. I know, I'm so proud of myself. Look at you. So but, proud of uh, you. But she will never go in there while I'm peeing, all right? <laughs> that's, that's, the tables do not yeah. turn. I'll I just don't want it to be an event. Like, I'll tell you. I, 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 I wanted to ask you what why you have pee anxiety. Because I have pee anxiety yeah. as well. It doesn't stop me from going to the restroom. Because I mean, as a guy, if Where you Where does want, yours stem from? I'll tell you what mine mostly comes from. Is that, I, and this is just me, I overthink everything. And that's where my social anxiety comes from. Is that yeah. I, I, I put myself under a microscope and assume that everyone else is putting me under a microscope. Mm -hmm. Which, in reality, no one cares about what I'm doing when I'm walking around in public. So when I approach a stall, especially with guys when we're at stalls, we're just with, I mean, I'm here. You know, right. to another guy with our dicks out and going pee. And uh, my brain goes like this. All right, start peeing. All right, you haven't started peeing. Okay, it's actually, it's been a while since you haven't started peeing. And so the guys probably noticed you haven't started peeing. So you need to start peeing. <laughs> okay, now it's really been a while and you really need to get started peeing. But then now I'm like really thinking about peeing. So I can't pee because I, all I can think about is that I haven't started peeing yet. And so this is all just going along as I'm just standing there with my, and then you think like, I'm just standing here with my dick in my hand. <laughs> I'm just standing here in my dick. That's what's what is great about being a woman and being in a stall. Because this, that happens to me. When I go into the bathroom at the same time someone else is going in and we both sit down on the toilet at the same yeah. time. Who starts first? It's always just like, oh, yeah. come on, come on, come yeah. on, come on. She knows you're in here. And like, then pee. <laughs> I'll go even a step further where, like, depending on, like, how bad I had to pee or how much I had to pee and that kind of thing, you know, I'll be peeing and there'll be someone else and be like, it's like, they're peeing super louder than me. And for yeah. then it becomes an auditory competition of like, I should pee that loud. Yeah. I should be peeing this much too. Yeah, or if you just have like one of those slow little trickle pees. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. sometimes sometimes you do go to the restroom, especially if like you're at the movies or something like that, and you go just to go, so you don't need to go. Like, like we just all went pee before right. we sat down to do this. And no matter how much you had to pee, you go and do it. So you might have had to pee a lot or only had to pee a little. Sure. So then if I go to the movie theater and I'm just like, I'm just getting that little bit out because I know that my old man bladder will have a problem in this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm there just standing there and you just hear this little trickle. And they're like, yep, done. And I walk away. But then all I think about is like, all they heard was a little trickle and I walked away. They <laughs> must think I was a crazy person. I guarantee you they've been in the same situation. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's the truth. Is or that you ever had like a bad bladder day where you constantly feel like you need to pee? Oh, God. And then you go to the bathroom and uh, it's just yeah. like, it's either water that essentially comes out or it's like, <coughs> and like yeah. the, the bladder trickle. still feels like it has to pee. But it's funny too that. because yeah. I get that way too and now it, it just kind of makes you think that like everyone, unless, I'm sure there's probably people who don't have any issues going sure. and peeing in the bathroom, but there's probably the other person in the stall who's like, oh, fuck, there's someone in here with me and now I gotta fucking, like yeah. there's been times where <laughs> if I'm walking to the bathroom and someone else, like if I like, you know, our bathroom, and you can clearly see someone else walking into it, and there's multiple stalls. I'll like just turn around and go to it, find another bathroom. <laughs> and go to it. I'm just like, I just wanna, I just wanna be alone. That's what's great about our office. That oh we, yeah, single we're all stalls. In. We have yeah. single stall bathrooms. Well, two, except for when people shit stalls. in there and don't flush it. Yeah, yeah, or just don't flush in general. Right. Yeah. Which I don't. We're working on it. So weird. <laughs> I don't flush my pee at home very often. That's what Chris was saying. If it's yellow, let them mellow, yeah. baby. I just like, I, it down. walking, it, you know what it reminds me of? But I can't smell either. Right. Well, what it reminds me of is uh, Saw. Because I watched the Saw movies a lot growing up. Like, for some reason, I was a fucked up kid and was like, these are great. And, and I think the first Saw movie, the guy is, like, changed to a toilet that's just disgusting. Uh. So anytime I see a toilet with anything in it, I'm just like, <laughs> Freaked out. PTSD of yeah. the That's salt P T S D. P T S D. Um, Am I right, guys? So Ew. I don't like it. <laughs> Definitely peed the bed with a guy in it. We weren't talking about that. Why would you bring that up? <laughs> just want to tell you something gross. <laughs> was this uh, like recently? Yeah, this was with Chonker. I peed the bed <laughs> with another guy in it because I drank too much okay. and I ended okay. up peeing the bed. I woke up and I was like. God, I must have sweated like oh, a lot. And then I like. <laughs> all in my crotch. <laughs> all in my crotch. And then I like tried to blame it on my dog. I was like, no, nah, my dog wet the bed, you know? And then he was like, no, I think you peed the bed. <laughs> And I, I was like, like, I like how he didn't like, at the very least, play along. Like, uh, yeah, pushing. the dog. <laughs> then he's like, you peed the bed. You peed the bed. And I was like, 
no, no, <laughs> no. And then I, I was like, smelled it. I was like, oh no, that's definitely like my pee. And you know, I know. You the know your scent. I know my scent. Mm. Do you know your because scent? Because I'm dehydrated. I, I could probably identify my pee versus no, oh someone God, else's. No. I mean, I feel. I hope my pee smells like everyone else's. I don't. Well, I, mean, well, I don't know actually, because I've only ever smelt my own pee. Right. Yeah. I think so, so the next RT life. Peace so we, yes, peace we have these cups. All right, whose is this? Oh yeah, that's definitely. God, that's gonna make a, everyone Chris. vomit. There's a, a thick bouquet in uh, there. <laughs> yucky. This episode of Always Open is brought to you by Away. Away creates thoughtful products built for the way modern travelers see the world. They started with the perfect suitcase, and now they offer a range of essentials as well, all of which will make your travel more seamless. Whoever said it's all about the journey has clearly never traveled during the holidays. It's the most stressful and craziest time to hit the road, but Away's products are designed to work and fit together, making travel smoother for the holidays and beyond. I have a, an Away suitcase. It's the bigger carry-on, and I use it every time I travel. It's the perfect size for those short, not too long trips, uh, but the bigger, uh, the bigger suitcase is what I use when I go on the longer trips. And it's perfectly compartmentalized, so you can put everything where it belongs. It packs away super easy. It's got a hard shell, so nothing gets damaged inside. And they come in all sorts of colors, too. I have a pink and a purple one, because a girl can never have too many options, even with their suitcases. Uh, because everyone has a unique travel style, Away offers a range of suitcases made from different materials, a variety of colors, and two carry-on sizes. So, for whoever you are and whatever you need to pack, gifts, comfy clothes, holiday treats, Away has luggage that works for you and how you travel. Traveling during the holidays is crazy, but getting away can make every trip a lot more seamless. Visit awaytravel.com always to learn more. And if you're in the US, the EU, the UK, Canada, Australia, order by 1159 on 1215, that's December 15th, for free ground shipping with guaranteed free delivery, by December 20th, that's right before Christmas. For additional last minute holiday shipping details, check out their website at awaytravel.com slash always. That's awaytravel.com slash always. Thank you, Away. Let's oh. get some, there's some box of issues questions. Let's do it. We got a couple this week. All right, this one comes from Simone. Uh, Simone writes, for the past five to six years, I've been in love with my best friend. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, I've always been kind of emotionally constipated and have a hard time feeling romantic love. So when I realized I was in love with them, it was quite a shock. What makes this complicated is that they're aromantic and not interested in a relationship. Am I pronouncing that right? Aromantic? Aromantic, aromantic. Uh, Which I respect. We had a long and very adult conversation about it and I went on to pretend to be over my feelings for them, except I'm not over it. Nothing is going to happen, obviously, and I don't want to be stuck in my feelings forever, so how do I deal with unrequited love? Submitted by Simone. Hmm. Five to six years in love with her best friend. That is rough, rough stuff. Yeah. I mean, if they're aromantic, then I mean, I, I think that you should maybe uh, be happy that you feel that and know that they feel that way for you, but not the same way. They just feel that love of friendship, a closeness. Mm -hmm. I also, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I imagine it's difficult because like they've been friends for five or six years and so they clearly know each other very well, but, and I guess it's hard to say this without really knowing their situation, but feelings could pass, mm -hmm. um, especially if you put yourself out there for other people or, or try to meet other people, you tend to be able to move on at some point, so. You know, putting all your eggs in this one basket might seem like I, the only solution right now. I think, and this is from someone who has zero background in therapy or anything like that, but I think, in my opinion, in my experience, is that we don't give our brains enough uh, uh, credit to have the ability to process through emotions if we actually want to process through them. Mm -hmm. And so... I think that there might be a chance, again, knowing so little about what the situation's going on, but there might be a chance that, that the reason why this has perpetuated as long as it has is that maybe this person is still trying to hold on to these feelings of love. And because I've been, you know, infatuated with someone who, uh, uh, you know, I, there's no chance I could be with them or even like been broken up with someone that I still have feelings for. And like you can hold on to those feelings in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Like you act, we have that bulldog ability to mm -hmm. like 
you know what, I'm going to, I can make myself feel this bad for forever. Or you can, you know, put yourself through these mental exercises of trying to process these feelings and accepting the reality of what's happening. I think accepting the reality helps you deaden those feelings so they're not as sharp. Like, sure, you may still like this person for forever. I mean, I even still have crushes on people that I'm like, oh, that would have been nice if that had worked out. That yeah. But they're definitely nowhere near where they were, where it was like that pining of like feeling like you're in love with this person that you, you don't have a relationship with. But you, you kind of can make that mental decision of either I'm going to actually try to let these feelings go and work through them, or I can... I might, you know, I'll hold on to him for forever. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel, I feel that sentiment, especially with being broken up with and still having feelings for that person, but knowing that that will not happen, never happen, and just having to face the sort of realities of <clears throat> what that means, and that sucks because you're kind of like on your own, yeah. and and you had such a future planned out, maybe like. I think that the trouble that a lot of people, or I, that I have, is I fantasize a lot about relationships. I fantasize about where they go. I think of the future a lot. And that's some sort of, that sometimes really can be really hard to let go if you're that person. Yeah, you can um, let your mind kind of. So mm -hmm. you just have go to too much. use your toolkit to sort of work through those, you know, uh, you know, slowly cutting the ribbon of whatever ties you together with that person. And that's not a yeah. totally uncommon just part of life where we are we are yeah. constantly faced with like impossibilities. Right. And 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 you know, plans that didn't work out and we just across the board have to learn to accept those things. And I think this is a situation as sticky as it is and uncomfortable as it is and unpleasant as it is to like have unrequited love, like it's still something that you can work through if you start mentally telling yourself to let this go yeah it's never an easy situation I, I mean obviously it's it's wonderful that you're respecting your friends feelings and how they identify and all that stuff um because i mean regardless of what the situation is it's a tough pill to swallow even if they were just not interested in you or if they were already in another relationship sure and i think kind of what you said is true of just you your mind could wander in terms of fantasizing about what it would be like with this person and I think shifting gears into rather feeling sorry for yourself and like you had this unrequited love, feeling grateful that this person is your friend, is in your life and right. feeling grateful for that connection and that feeling that you have because not a lot of people get to have that feeling. Right. Um, and just kind of fucking, you know, judo punching your way into <laughs> gratefulness versus right. feeling sorry for yourself. Um, and just, yeah, maybe focusing on trying to meet other people too might help you get over things, mm -hmm. but um, I'm, I'm happy that Simone is not trying to change how their friend feels. Yes, I think that's, that's yeah. very important yeah. because, I mean, you have to, first of all, like the first thing that comes is, is respect. And if you're not respecting that person and how they feel and like, you know, especially how they identify, because that's already tough enough, like, you know, people who um, are aromantic or asexual, like, are under a lot of scrutiny because yeah. they're living what some people may deem as, like, you know, not normal lives. So yeah. um, that's very, very sweet that they're like, I respect this and, you know, don't want to, like, impose or anything, but, like, how do I get over it? Because it can be hard to, like, be like, oh, I, I, I've realized I've you know, this person would be absolutely perfect for me, but they're actually not because you're not compatible. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think it is valid to say, like, I'm going to take some time, like, step away, you know, uh, and um, work on myself and, like, maybe try and meet someone new. There are a lot of fish in the sea. There are a lot of fish in the sea. Good luck, Simone. Let us know how it goes. Godspeed, Simone. Godspeed. Let's do another question. Stay golden, pony boy, girl. I'm going to save this one for the post show. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, saucy. <laughs> Too spicy right. for the regular show. Uh, <clears throat> this one's submitted by an, an anonymous male. Ooh. And he writes, Hi, always open. Hello. I'm a 28-year-old man and have recently started talking to a 26-year-old woman after being single for almost eight years. We hit it off and have a lot in common, uh, a lot of common interests, sorry, 
but there is a tiny issue. She has a three-year-old daughter. I've never wanted kids myself, and she's told me she doesn't expect me to be a father figure for her daughter, but I can't help but feel that it's going to make it harder to do the things I want to do with her, like traveling, alone time, etc. I also know as I get closer to 30, finding someone without kids is going to be much harder. Should I suck it up or break it off before there's any attachment? Any advice would greatly help love the show and keep up the good work. Anonymous mail. Well, thank you for liking the show, <laughs> first of all. John, curious as to your perspective on this, because you um, ended a very long marriage. Very long. Not long. Nine years. Nine years, long marriage. Have two kids. I do. And went into the dating world. I did. And stuff like that. Um, so what you got to do is you have to challenge this three-year-old to a fight. <laughs> <laughs> you win the fight, you win her, and it's a problem solved. There you go. There you go. Fight to the death. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Only one survives. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have a very askewed perspective on this because I have, I, I've, the only dating I've done, because I didn't date really prior to getting married, and then I, I dated one person, married them, and stayed with them in a relationship that I shouldn't have for nine years. Uh, so all of my dating life has been with having kids. Right. Um, but uh, I've done my best to try to make having kids not affect my dating life as much as possible. Um, and so, I mean, I get as a person who's just like, I never, I didn't think I'd ever want kids and that kind of thing. And you're finding someone else who you get along with, but they have a kid and you're like, oh, we kind of freaked out about that. Um, yeah, there'll be restrictions on like being able to do everything you want to do with the person. Like there are so many times like in the dating, like online dating life where I'd see people who were like, I'm looking for somebody to be spontaneous with and just be like, go on trips out of nowhere. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Pass, can't do that, not gonna do that. I'm poor and I've got kids. We're not gonna, we are not <laughs> compatible for that. Um, so would you, what would you say in this situation? It, I mean, if the person said that they're not looking for another daddy, you know, to be their kid, they, they, that probably means that they're, that they're, they have this healthy like separation. Like their kid is their kid and they're not looking for someone to like help them raise this kid. Um, and, uh, I mean, do you think that's that's true though? Like, not that not that you would need someone else to help raise your kids, but could you truly keep the two separate? For, I do. You I, do? Like yeah, completely. I, I mean, for a while, for a long time. Like when I meet somebody, um, I don't even tell them I have kids on like the first date unless right. they ask. If they ask, I don't lie. Yeah. Um, I but I try not to, you know, word vomit on somebody and be like, "Hi, I'm John. Divorce the two kids." <laughs> like I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, I don't. I divorced. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is, Love me. Yeah. I, I, I try to ease them into you this life. You dinner. <laughs> I mean, can you cook my kids on mac and cheese? <laughs> there's a lot about my life I try to ease people into, even like this yeah. rooster teeth thing. Right. I don't let people know. Like, I don't even let people know my last name first time we go. Yeah, out. I remember when I was on Tinder and dating and stuff like that. I did not. I tried to yeah. keep. I'm separate, yeah. very Googleable. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, so, but no, even when they find out, I'm like, my, they, my kids don't meet people I date until like weeks, if not months into dating right. them, that kind of thing. But it eventually, I mean, eventually you would think it, it would ha if you're, I guess what my, my, my head is, is if you're trying to pursue a more serious relationship with someone and they have a kid, the two will intersect eventually. Eventually, eventually well, but I mean. Especially, yeah, if, it's, if you're in it for the long haul. But I've yeah. had varying degrees of that, uh, I mean, I, I'm in a situation, I don't know if this person's in as far as like me and my kids. I don't have my kids all the time. Mm -hmm, right. So I have that ease yeah. of separating where I've even, I've, I've gone out with people and had a long-term relationship where uh, when I had my kids, that was just the time we didn't see each other. Um, and and that, there was like a, almost a complete separation, that kind of thing, just because they, they didn't, they didn't necessarily hate kids, but they just, they just didn't really, um, you know, they just weren't a kid person very much, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so I didn't want to overwhelm them with my kids all the time. Um, and so we kept separation. It was fine. Um, but I don't, know this, I don't know the situation with this person. They might, if they're a single mom, there's a better chance they have the kids yeah. all the time, at the very least probably a lot. That's the situation with most single moms. Yeah. I think this guy needs to... If you're talking to someone who you really are interested in, you just have to determine whether what like what your priorities are. If this is a person that you really find connection with and you feel like that is a very unique situation for you and that like that is worth more to you than the potential of hitting it off and then eventually maybe 
having some sort of involvement with this kid's life, yeah. Yeah. then that's kind of up to you to determine. If you feel like you are very um, determined, you don't want kids, this is not for you, this is not your future, if you do hit it off, you can't see yourself being a father figure or like living the life you want to live with this situation, then you should probably break it off. Yeah, if you're if yeah. you're that vehement about yeah. like not wanting, like actively not wanting to have kids, like that is not at all what you want, and you you do not like that, then yeah, break this off. Yeah. But if you're just kind of trepidatious about kids and and you don't think of yourself as a kid person and that kind of thing, you'd be surprised how much you can get used to that, especially if the person that you're interested in is someone you have a lot of, you know, common interests and you guys are very compatible. Like, you you can get. This sounds weird, but you can get used to the kid really easily. Kids are not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, especially if, if you're not even in charge of raising that kid. Like, that's not your kid. You don't have to raise them. You don't have to do anything. Although, if, if Although things if it, progress. Yeah, oh, yeah. Things... But, again, that's a long time. Right. And especially, yeah. like, this is a three-year-old kid, so it's not even a baby. Yeah. Like, this kid's, like, 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 becoming more and more autonomous as the days go by. Um, and so, yeah, the, the time where you have to be heavily involved with this kid is way down the line and you can make that decision and as you go by, but it, unless I think you're just very much like, no, no kids. If you are, get the hell out of there and do not start this. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think about the kid in that relationship mm -hmm. where it's like, I don't know, it's my my dad always like because he's a single dad so he's like it, this is a pa he's always telling his like partner this is a package deal mm -hmm. this kid always comes first sure and then I think about the kid and I think you know you don't you wouldn't if you if you're not planning for maybe like a serious relationship right now then maybe maybe don't get uh, maybe maybe play it obviously play it slow. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but uh, think about that. I would just think, I, to me, oh, I just keep thinking about the child of like, I, it would suck to like meet this kid, girl bond, and then you end up not being around anymore or whatever. Yeah. I don't know the situation. It could be, I'm thinking catastrophic. I'm thinking, you know, I who knows what it is. But you have to also think about that kid's life and you don't want to like involve yourself in this life if you actually don't want to be a part of their life. Yeah, yeah obviously, that's what I mean. Like if you, if yeah. you don't want to be a part of the, the kids. I have, so. a, I have a friend who uh, she is dating a guy who has who has kids or she, he has one kid and he actually has, I think, sole custody of him. And so she's like, oh yeah, like I haven't met him yet. And like I come over after his son has gone to sleep. Like oh, it's yeah. like 7 p.m. and that's when we hang out and like I'll go over um, you know, and she was like, but one time, like, I guess they were like, she was spending the night and like the kid woke up and was like, did the whole like, oh, I threw up. And like, she had to like oh. bolt and hide, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I mean, but I think the, uh, like, I think he has another part of his question, which is like, he's like, I'm approaching 30. Like, this is going to probably more common and become more common. Mm -hmm. And it is right. Like, yeah. I mean, the older you get, the more chances of you meeting someone with kids it is, is a possibility. It is and it isn't like there, yeah. there are. Plenty of people without kids. Oh watch. yeah, especially people our age. Yeah. Um, but uh, are, I think also people are having kids later and later in right. life these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I mean, it is a possibility that like, you know, there might be a good chance that like the next person you meet might also have a kid yeah. or something. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's if if I were him and I would be like, there is no way in hell that I never I never want to have kids. I don't want to be around anyone who has kids because like. Especially, I'm assuming this is he's dating, or yeah, he's a 26 year old female who, yeah. you know, she probably cares for her kid, and like, three year old is like a, still a baby. It's a lot of work. Like, that's a yeah. pri that's a priority for her. Mm -hmm. um, and like, she might not be able to go off and do the things right. with you that you'd want to do in life, like, like travel. You yeah, travel or, yeah, that yeah. definitely there will be restrictions. Yeah, and so. something that kind of sticks out to me too about this question is that at the end he says, "Should I suck it up?" Or break it off. That's, and I, that's your, yeah. your. And you shouldn't have to suck it up. Right. Like you shouldn't have to settle for something. No. Right. Like, there are other people that I'm sure you could find and have a connection with. Um, but again, like, yeah, it's it's if you feel like this could be something really good and a, a kid is something you maybe are a little more flexible at, about in terms of your perspective on that, and if that's something that you could maybe see in your life, then yeah. But if it's something you are very, as you said. Um, what was the word you used? Vehemently. Vehemently about. Yeah. Um, then maybe no. Yeah, because I mean, no, no, no. Relationships are about compromise, but if you're 
referring to something as sucking it up, then you probably already know that you're not going to be happy. Yeah, so. you shouldn't yeah. have to settle. Yeah, for for something, you should you should want to be in that situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks for your question. Um, hopefully it goes well. Feel free to follow up with us uh, if you email us alwaysopen at rashid.com or use the hashtag alwaysopen on Twitter or any social media. Um, guys, thank you for joining me today. We have a post show with these lovely people. If you're a first member, please sign up. It helps support Rooster Teeth and all the content we make here. You also get this show a day early with no ads on the Rooster Teeth website if you are a first membership, so please sign up. Uh, you could also check us out everywhere that you listen to your podcasts. Yep. Spotify, iTunes, yep. Yep. Google yep. Play, I don't know, all yep. the places. So feel free to download the audio version and listen to it uh, again. Why not? Also, it's the holidays. So go buy some Rooster Teeth merch yeah. for your grandma, for some, your mom. Some of this stuff. For your baby Good daddy. <laughs> for the hot mom you're dating who has a hot kid. <laughs> <laughs> to hot kids. <laughs> to hot kids. Hot See you next week, guys. Thank you for watching. Cheers. 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 Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Always Open. Uh, are you afraid of Disneyland for whatever reason? Are let you us know. weird? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, and don't forget to give it a like. Do it now. We'll now, like you forever. Now. Like it. You're going to scare them. Beautiful.